In this video I'm going to show you how you can install macOS Catalina using DOS Dude One's uh, Catalina patcher on an unsupported Mac. Here I have a 2011 8.1 MacBook Pro. You can see here it's 13 inch. I have the base Core i5 processor with 8 gigs of RAM and the HD 3000 graphics. i will show you on the, uh, on, my, on the memory I have 8 gigabytes as you can see and my storage is a Samsung 120 gigabyte SSD so this is not supported under macOS Mojave or any further but you can get it working using those dudes once patcher I will link him in the description check him out he's amazing with his stuff so open Safari type in as you can see it will show up those dudes once personal web server press enter go to my software then find the Catalina patcher. You want to download the latest version? I already have downloaded it. I go here, Catalina patcher. It's gonna verify you. You can skip this. You're gonna open it. It's gonna verify it. You want to open it? Yes. Here, the patcher isn't starting. So press continue. Now, press continue. Here, I don't have a copy, so I'm going to download one. I'm going to start. I'm going to uh, stop the recording now, and I'm going to resume when it's downloaded. So after you have downloaded the, the installer, it will give you these three options. Install to this machine, create a bootable installer, and create an ISO image. So the first option you would use, um, it would show up as an application, as a regular macOS update, and you just update that way. The second option is to create a bootable installer, which you would flash it to an external USB like this, and then you will install that way. And thirdly is to create an ISO image, which you can use in a virtual machine or burn to a DVD. Now I would highly suggest the second option, the create a bootable installer, because it is very um, easy to troubleshoot and if you use one of the other options you won't be able to troubleshoot it. So create a bootable installer is the way to go. I mean, I, I, I'm not saying that the other options are bad, you know, you can use install this machine if you have um, a 2011 Mac like I do, but if, I have, if you have an older one, for example uh, 29, uh, 2010, uh, you you will have problems with uh, APFS um, uh, because Catalina only supports APFS um, based hard drives, and you'll be and you'll not be able to use install to this machine, or you will use it, but you but you might get problems. So create a bootable installer is the best way to go. You, you just click on it. Here you need to put in your USB drive. Uh, if it's not going, if it's not showing for you, just go back, press it. As you can see, mine is install macOS High Sierra because I had a, a High Sierra installation here. But now I'm gonna go and start. Yes, I need I need my password, and now it's going to make the bootable installer once again. I'll cut this to when it's done. Alright, so now as you can see it has successfully done it, so now you need to quit and restart your PC while holding down the ALT key with your, um, with your uh, USB. Okay, so to boot into the USB we just made you have to hold down the ALT key and also power the laptop on. I'm going to do that now. Don't release the Alt key until you get the screen options. Here you want to go into macOS base system. It's our USB. Now just wait for it to load up. I am in. First we go to the disk utility. Go to next continue. Now if you are running macOS High Sierra you will be fine. You, you, you won't have to convert your drive to APFS but if you are using a Mac 
which has a which has uh, El Capitan or Sierra and lower you'll have to convert you either convert your drive to APFS and not lose any information or you would reformat it to APFS I'm gonna show you how to do both so on the here's my hard drive untitled I'm gonna click to un, I'm gonna click unmount it's not mounted and up here go to uh, convert and you and you'd uh, press convert to APFS but mine is already on APFS but you you would press that and it would convert it for you otherwise if you just want to format it go to erase and make sure to choose APFS here and, and you would give it a name but I'm not gonna do any of any of them because I already have an APFS drive here I'm going to reinstall macOS again uh, follow the steps now you'll see the drive install as you can see my computer is not connected to a power source but I do have 83% battery which will be more than enough to, to do this so if you have less battery you have you had to plug it in but I have more than enough so I'm going to continue and now it's going to continue the installation this is the first uh, the first phase. The second phase is uh, when it will restart. It will load up on its own to a um, <coughs> to a screen with the Apple logo and a progress bar showing the time. Uh, I'll also show you that. I will, I'll put in the video so you know. But you just leave this go, and when it's done, we'll we'll uh, cut back to the video and show you what you have to do. So this is how the installation looks like on the second stage. You have an Apple logo and, and you have a timer here telling you how many minutes you have left and a progress bar. After this, you, you'll either boot into the desktop. If you already had an installation, just convert your drive to APFS. Or if you're doing this for the first time, you'd set up Mac OS as, as you would if you just installed um, the operating system. So depending on these is what you'll do next. This drive already has a macOS installation that we just upgraded this to, so it uh, it should not give me a, a, a full setup, but it might give me some options to adjust. Either way, I'll show you when it's done. Okay, so now it had the process has finished installing, so I'll just go into my user now. I have not done anything since I pressed install. It has restarted all on its own. And we should see something pop up. You can see I got notification. Performance may be affected until completed, so it is optimizing this Mac. Yep, here is some of the setup. I'll just continue this. Okay. Uh, not now. I'm not I'm not gonna use Siri. Now here you can choose your look. I will go with auto because I want it to be brighter on the day and darker on the night. And that's pretty much everything you need to do. Now there are some things I'm gonna show you so don't so don't click off. Alright, here it is. You can see we're already getting updates. And here it is. New patch, this is from the DOS to Duan patcher. I'm gonna install this item. It needs a password, just gonna give it. Okay, so now as you can see, I'm gonna restart it later. If I go here to about this Mac, we will see, yep, there is macOS Catalina running on the early 2011 Mac. This is unsupported, but running through the DOS dude one patcher. The process was seamless, we barely had to do anything. We just used uh, the patcher and a USB drive and we're all good. If you wanted, you, you, you could even, um, what you could do is you could just use the application, but we'd have more success this way. As you can see, if I, everything is working. Our... Uh, as you can see, you have the patch updater here, if there is any updates available. Also in the system settings, you'll have the patch updater here. And you can also enable settings here. And now, we have completed the installation, but there's one thing I have to show you, so don't click off yet. Now we're gonna restart the system. We're in the recovery back again. We'll go to macOS post install. 
continue here make sure you choose so as you can see it changes the patches for the MacBook Pro 8,1 which is my one but you could change here the model number for if for example if you're doing this for another Mac or the wrong one has been selected it should go to, but uh, just in case you can change the one here or, or, or if you're doing for another computer for example you pulled out the drive from another one you you would change the you would put its um, model identifier here and also its drive because I only have the untitled which is my hard drive I'm not gonna change I'm gonna click done and now we go to apply patches this is gonna apply the patches here for um, MacBooks that are 2010 and um, no, sorry, Twen yes, 2010, 29 and older, you'll have to use the APFS patch, but because it's a 2011 model, I don't have to do it. It already has APFS support. If you're using an older Mac, you would get uh, a near, um, some text on the screen while you boot for the first time, because that's a, that's a, that's a bootloader that does do one how to specifically make for it to support APFS booting. So massive thanks to him for making this patch. Make sure to check him out. I will link him in the in the description. He also makes some really interesting projects. For example, he made a 17-inch mid 2012 MacBook Pro a while ago. Also made a quad-core unibody 13-inch 2012. So make sure to, to check him out. And now this is going to finish installing and will reboot to macOS Catalina with everything ready to go. I'll also show you a, a, a little trick you can use when you are on Catalina to make your experience just a, li a little bit better. So the final thing I'm going to show you is on the software update. So to get into this menu, you would have to go to your Mac uh, Apple logo here, System Preferences, and it's how to do with the updates. As you can see, if you open it, it, it will send you here. Then here you have to find uh, system updates, uh, no sorry, software updates. Go and go to advanced. And here, make sure to tick. Uh, I have to have my password for this. Install macOS updates. This will do this automatically. It usually will notify you, but it's pretty annoying. Just click on notification, and get into the screen. This will make sure you do it automatically and will make your experience a little bit better as well when DOS dude one will, will make patches if, if he will make patches this will automatically get them or if the laptop is having a, um, uh, for example applications from Apple as you can see here uh, I already have an update for example I already have Safari I can update but uh, you might get other apps and this is where you would update them safely so hope you found this video helpful, massive shout outs again to dos one for this patcher and I will see you all in the next video. I also have some other Mac tutorials you can watch, thank, thank you for watching, take care, bye now.